The cytoskeleton is a network of protein filaments and accessory proteins that provide eukaryotic cells with structural integrity, motility, and plasticity. In other words, strength, movement, and shape. The cytoskeleton's primary components are actin filaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments, each of which has a unique formation process and purpose within the cell. Actin filaments determine the shape of the cell surface and are needed for whole cell locomotion. Microtubules determine the arrangement of membrane-enclosed organelles and direct intracellular transport. And intermediate filaments provide mechanical strength to various cellular components. Accessory proteins perform many functions such as linking different filaments to each other and to other cells and helping to transport organelles within cells. The formation of filaments made of the protein actin depends on the concentration of actin monomers in a given region of a eukaryotic cell. Nucleation of an actin polymer occurs when two subunits bind weakly, and the affinity for additional monomers increases as the filament lengthens. The growing filament possesses positive and negative, or upstream and downstream, ends, where free monomers are bound or removed based on their concentration. Monomers at the upstream end are bound to ATP. As additional monomers accumulate here, ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP on downstream subunits. As the filament lengthens, these subunits grow towards the downstream end, where they tend to dissociate from the polymer. Capping proteins bind and stabilize most actin filaments primarily at their positive ends, greatly slowing the rate of both filament growth and depolymerization. The protein tropomyosin also stabilizes actin filaments as it binds with seven adjacent actin subunits in each protofilament. Microtubules form when alpha and beta subunits of the protein tubulin combine to form heterodimers that bind to each other lengthwise in a helical fashion. These form an association of protofilaments with a hollow core, or lumen. A head-on view of the polymer shows heterodimers approaching and binding to the growing microtubule in a helical fashion while a side view shows the helical structure of alternating heterodimers approaching and binding to the growing microtubule, thus forming protofilaments. Microtubule growth and shrinkage is modulated by proteins with opposing actions known as microtubule-associated proteins, or MAPs, and catastrophe proteins. The preferential binding of XMAP215 to growing microtubule ends provides stability, while kinesin-13 proteins shorten microtubules by removing tubulin dimers. Various intermediate filaments such as keratin and lamin are formed by many different polypeptides. Specific filaments are formed when like polypeptides combine with each other to form coiled coil dimers with C-terminal ends aligning to form tails and N-terminal ends aligning to form heads. When two dimers merge, their tail ends bind to head ends making tetramers. These combine to form protofilaments, which adjoin to form a variety of rope-like filaments. Subunits can bind and separate throughout the length of most intermediate filaments, unlike microtubules and actin filaments. One role that actin filaments perform at the cellular level is to form microvilli in the intestinal lumen that increase the cell surface area available for absorbing nutrients from food. The bacteria Listeria monocytogenes, however, can invade epithelial cells and hijack actin by recruiting its accessory proteins to incite subunit polymerization adjacent to the rogue bacterium, thus moving it within and between epithelial cells. An example of microtubule function at the cellular level is seen during meiotic and mitotic anaphase. Here, the interplay of microtubules and accessory proteins cause tubulin dimers to dissociate from microtubules at individual kinetochores, thus helping to shorten the spindle and separate chromatids, as required by cell division. Kinesin motor proteins help move microtubules and membrane-bound organelles around the cell. The light chain of the kinesin protein binds to its cargo, while adjacent heavy chains bind to two separate subunits that form heads that constantly bind to the microtubule. Through a cycle of ATP hydrolysis reactions, these heads undergo conformational changes and act in a hand-over-hand -hand motion to progressively carry cargo along the microtubule. Examples of intermediate filaments include lamins, which form the nuclear lamina, a meshwork lining and strengthening the inner side of the nuclear envelope. 
Keratins, another family of important intermediate filaments, form extensions across the cytoplasm and form cell-to-cell -cell junctions, allowing neighboring cells to adhere, aiding in strength and elasticity of the epithelium. At the organismal level, actin filaments are central to the function of muscular contraction and relaxation. Vigorous muscular exertion leads to an increase in actin and myosin contractile proteins and muscular strength. The process of cell division requires the separation of chromosomes by microtubules and the formation of actin-based contractile rings during cytokinesis. Crucial steps that are required for organismal development and growth, such that a multi-billion celled organism results from the division of a single cell. The influence of intermediate filaments on the organism can be seen as the resilience of keratin allows excessively stretched skin to resist breakage and reform in its normal shape. Ah. Keratin filaments also form tough appendages such as hair and fingernails. Remember the good old days back when we were alive? Of course, he talked. Remember those old cross balls like Leo and Hoke? Why, of course! In 1682, Leo and Hoke, a microscopist and the father of microbiology, stated With their postulations, flesh fibers consist of internal filaments. Oh. Ah, 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 ah. And then there was Giorgio Bolivi in 1703. Fibers of varied size and assembled in different arrays should be the basic structural units of all organic matter. Ah, yes, the good old days. Oh, but how can we forget about 1882 when Sigmund Freud said, The nerve cell in the brain is arranged as a network of fibers. Ah, but finally, someone with a real clue. Guess who? You must be talking about Santiago Ramon y Cajal. Yes, he developed lab techniques that displayed protoplasmic fibrils with unprecedented clarity in 1903. The existence of intraprotoplasmic fibrils is a general anatomic law of the cell. I miss our good friend Paul Winterbear, the French embryologist and radical epigeneticist who coined the term cytoskelet in 1931. Cytoskelet. It's French for cytoskeleton. But let's be serious for a moment. We would be remiss if we didn't reminisce about our Hungarian colleague Bruno Stahl, who in 1942 developed the technique to extract muscle protein. This let him isolate large amounts of very pure actin, which he is credited with discovering. And Keith Porter's electron microscopy images in 1957 revealed cytoskeleton structures in a definitive way, too. And in the 1960s, when the German Manfred Schliwa identified motor proteins within the cytoskeleton... Have you seen his current work? I use a laser trap to manipulate actin filaments to measure the movement generated by myosin. When myosin is fixed onto a glass surface, I can see actin being moved around on the slide. And then there was 1970. Ah, the days of Elias Lazaridis and Klaus Weber, our German colleagues. We used antibodies in indirect immunofluorescences to demonstrate by fluorescence light microscopy the distribution and pattern of actin-containing filaments in a variety of cell types. Actin filaments were shown to span the cell length or to concentrate in focal points and patterns characteristic for each individual cell. And in the 1980s, Ken Holmes proposed a model for F-actin derived by fitting a helix of G-actin structures according to low-resolution fiber diffraction data from the actin moment. Ah, the good old days.